Well, we're continuing to track uh, the rising amount of coronavirus cases. A lot of homeowners right now are wondering what that means for housing prices, and a lot are actually struggling to even complete home purchases that may have already been underway before the economic downturn hit as uh, people stay at home harder and harder to get some of these deals passed through. Uh, for more on that, I want to bring on Shark Tank's Barbara Corcoran, uh, the Corcoran Group founder, and of course, uh, the favorite shark for a lot of you out there. Uh, Barbara, it's good to chat with you again. Thank you so much for joining us. First, I just want to get your thoughts uh, so far on what we've been seeing. A lot of people right now who work in real estate struggling to complete deals that were already in the pipeline. What have you been hearing? Um, the, the real estate market is a very lopsided market right now. And you alluded to earlier that a lot of people, are, uh, some people are not able to close their deals. That is a problem. Probably one in, I'd say, 10 deals, if there was an average, people are not able to close. They can't get the appraisal done. They can't get the financing in hand because of the administration, administrative challenges that are happening right now. Uh, but it's been a very lopsided market in one regard because I've been speaking to people around the country in the trade. People have been closed down. People are still selling. And the high end market is suffering already. The middle end of the market is clicking on like there's nothing wrong with it. And the low end of the market has actually gotten stronger. So surprisingly. Um, they were, I was speaking with a broker in Louisville this morning and their average price is about 170000 and they had a record month of 875 sales. Same is true of Dallas and Fort Worth. But when you look at New York City, uh, the listings are down, way, way, way down. We had 700 new listings versus 1,700, and deals are just not being made in the city. We had actually four sales in a week. I've never heard of anything in a city like New York. Yeah, I mean, that was that was kind of the headline that jumped out at me, too. When you look at it, the Ocean Report that tracks the the luxury sales that would be above four million dollar sales. Uh, mm -hmm. Only two contracts signed in a week. Uh, that was the worst that they've seen since August uh, of 2009. Again, one of those other comparisons that we can look back to the financial crisis there. Um, but you're right. I mean, I, I guess there are some swings when you look at luxury versus some of the lower end here, but they're all struggling with the same thing. When you think about how many checkpoints that need to get done, uh, inspector, uh, inspectors saying that they don't want to come out to houses, they don't want to put their workers in harm's way. So how do you really, I mean, uh, the data isn't necessarily going to play out here because home prices, uh, we got last clip, but that was for uh, January. So you're not necessarily going to see uh, any real number impact, but how bad do you think it could get uh, in terms of the slowdown, what you could see housing prices dipping to later in the year? Uh, you know, it depends more on what the unemployment rate is and how well they roll out the uh, new package that has so many benefits for people. It depends on those two cards more than anything else that is actually happening in the real estate market. But let's say, for example, unemployment rate uh, doesn't go through the roof. And I think there are as many people believe who it's going to that don't. Let's say the um, incentive package comes out and saves a lot of people. But for how long? Two, three months. But the best case scenario is with cheap mortgage rates, constrained inventory, which we definitely have because there's very little new uh, units coming on the market. And with the help from the stimulus package and the spring market, we never experienced converging with the upcoming fall market in the summer. If that all hits together, you have a possibility that the market will explode in both in terms of number of sales and rising prices. It could be a catch up and beyond a catch up. But what is the basis of all that is you must keep unemployment late, late, pardon me, must keep unemployment low, and you must have this new package come out and actually get the cash into the hands of the people that need it. And that's the million dollar question, really. Hey, Barbara, Kristen here. Good to chat with you again. I wanted to know, I know you were talking about the high end, the luxury market is struggling right now, while on the lower end, it's actually booming. If you are a realtor in a place like New York, is this a time where just to get through the next couple of weeks and months, you have to start pivoting on what you are going to be showing and what you're going to be selling? And if you are a buyer, if you still are getting paid, if you still have a job, is right now a really great time to get into the market? Well, it's nice. The word pivoting is always sexy to hear, uh, but what are you going to pivot to? 
Uh, you can't show the units. Sellers don't want you in. Even the new development units aren't showing, aren't having, aren't having open houses. So the most you could pivot is you could do virtual tours. But do people really buy real estate and how often without actually walking into the unit? Very few people. Uh, will take that kind of risk. Very few people are going to close deals. So what does the average real estate agent in an urban area like New York or Los, uh, LA or any of the big urban markets actually do? Uh, they uh, hope that the stimulus package comes out that's going to recognize independent contractors, which the great majority of the people are independent contractors, and they're going to apply for help. That's exactly what they're going to do. It's very hard to reinvent yourself on a dime in a failing uh, economic market. What are you going to do? Sell something else? These are great salespeople. Nobody's selling anything. So really, they're going to be in line with everybody else looking uh, for some benefit from the federal government. That's what's going to happen. Yeah. And the other thing, too, I mean, we, we've got a couple stories looking into uh, people selling houses digitally, maybe taking a tour digitally, uh, looking at houses that way. But I mean, this is a big purchase. It's not like you just want to go out and people want to kick the tires on some of these houses. Uh, mm -hmm. What do you think about this, the trend shift there and, and whether or not that can even replace things like a home purchase. It's going to help the rental market and it's going to help the temporary uh, luxury market. People running from the city wanting to rent a house in Maine or Northern Connecticut for three months. It's going to help that market because people will commit to a short term lease and maybe even a one year lease with the super showing the apartment on virtual tour if they really need the apartment. But once you get outside the rental market, there's no way people are going to be buying units because of a phenomenal virtual tour. Unless, of course, those units could be offered at half price. Hey, maybe even I'll jump in there and say, what the heck? Let me take a shot. Uh, but it's not the typical buyer by any means. But this will change the way real estate is marketed without a doubt. Uh, I think you're going to see all the brick and mortar stores uh, that are paid for by large real estate brokers probably not exist two years from today because people are learning to sell real estate at home without a doubt, just as they do in many other businesses. I think it's going to create a new uh, a, a new uh, market or no market for a commercial sector that previously really needed commercial space and storefront space. It's just going to add to the problem. Now, it's going to change the market, but will it make people buy online? Uh, just looking at a virtual tour, I just don't see that really happening. Barbara, when we look at this right now, I think a lot of people, the market overall got excited by the fact that we did get a record $2 trillion stimulus bill pushed through. The president signed that last week. Uh, and we just heard Ivanka Trump talking about those checks potentially making their way to small businesses here in the country by Friday, uh, as soon as Friday. So when you look at that, obviously you invest in a lot of companies through Shark Tank. You deal with a lot of business owners, small business owners. Uh, what are you hearing about the struggles that they're dealing with right now and trying to figure out whether or not they should furlough workers, how hard it's going to be for them to make ends meet as they await this aid uh, and the uncertainty down the road? Well, first off, I'm surprised to hear those checks are going to be arriving on Friday because I have many uh, small businesses that have been applying and having a hard time even applying for the help. So we'll see what Friday brings. Uh, but what every small business owner is right now is very scared, and they should be. They have reasons to be scared. When I spoke with the 70 some odd businesses I've invested in over the years on Shark Tank, I can tell you that the average entrepreneur in the last two weeks that I'm working with have fired between 25 and 30% of their employees. That's a lot of people. And so I'm expecting, unless something really happens that's dramatic, that turns us uh, around, which we're all hoping for the stimulus bill to do that, uh, that translates into a very uh, high unemployment rate. Every one of my entrepreneurs are planning to apply for help. I'm wondering how long the help is going to go on. I could see it working for two to three months after that, I'm worried again, already early. But what they are doing is the smart ones are shifting their models, they're getting more creative, they're making the teams tighter, they're communicating with the people, even though they're all working at home, they've made them a tight team by talking to them every day online. So the smart ones will come through, but the great majority of the investments I made, I don't expect them to make it honestly uh, through this trough. Wow. I just 
Yeah, no, I mean, that's surprising to hear because those would be some of the better companies you would think, the, the ones that you invested in uh, through the show and have the platform of that too. But earlier, uh, your fellow shark, Mark Cuban, was weighing in on Yahoo Finance uh, today saying that capitalism is what has saved us here. And you, you wonder whether or not that would be the case with all the money right now getting redistributed to these companies that are struggling. We have seen, you know, the question there on, on whether small businesses will get the same kind of aid that some of these larger businesses that have been able to lobby for will be getting as well. But we are seeing large companies in the U.S. step up through all this. When you look at GM working with Ventec Life Systems to create ventilators, you can look at Ford and Toyota doing the same to create uh, to create PPE for nurses on the front lines, distilleries making hand sanitizer. There's a lot going on. But what have you made about the way companies have been able to step up in such a short amount of time to try and help out here and, and the ingenuity of some of these companies out there to hop in? Yeah. Well, these smaller companies are in a, in a way almost deserve uh, more credit because they have uh, less resources to rely on. Uh, they have less people uh, to employ in whatever endeavor they want. Uh, with the very small businesses that, that I've been involved in, the ones that are going to make it, uh, they have been very creative to weather the storm. I know my cousin's main lobster, which is a series of restaurants and lobster trucks, got all their trucks on the road. They've gotten all, all the orders online and they're delivering into neighborhoods so they could deliver their rolls. Now that might sound like a big deal, but their sales are off almost 70%. And now they're only all 40 percent. That's a sizable difference. Uh, you have co uh, companies like Pipcorn who are out there and making all their their popcorn, but giving a full third of their revenue and popcorn to all the nurses around the New York, Connecticut area. So you have to applaud them. They're doing what they can. And you have Grace and Lace who actually switch their production from ladies clothing to face masks that they're giving away for free. And their supporters are paying for the postage to get them to the medical community that needs it. So but it's interesting that the people who have uh, in small business sometimes the least resources, but the most conviction find a way to help out. And these are exactly the entrepreneurs I'm not the least bit worried about because they have a great way of standing on their feet and making room for the next guy and really making a difference. So, I mean, to me, that's a happy note in all of this. But the ones that are less capable uh, are really not thinking that way. They're thinking, who's going to pull me through? And all the stimulus package in the world is, isn't going to be the lottery. And no matter what help they get, they're just not going to be pulled through. Yeah, no, but worthy of a shout out, no doubt, when we think about small businesses grappling with all this, with fewer resources, still trying to make things work. And you're there to help them out through it. Barbara Corcoran, uh, the shark that we all love on ABC Shark Tank. Thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate it. Make sure you watch us on Friday night, new time slot. There you go. Wait, what time slot is it? I got to clear my schedule. Eight o'clock Eastern time. There you go. Barbara Corcoran, love you. Thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate it. Stay safe. Hey, investors. Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well, then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up-to-the-minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day, wherever you are.